I will give you 15 life. seconds before I pick up that phone and call Capitol Police. Please leave the office. There's the door. Leave. Leave. We would like to talk. No, not today. Leave. We've done, we've talked before. We've done this. There are new There's a door. We would like to talk I'm to sure there is. There's a door, please. Virginia Fox is the chairwoman of the Education and Workforce Committee. So she's responsible for calling these hearings and bringing all of the witnesses for the past few months. We see it almost on a bi-weekly basis of some president of a university called in to testify about um, quote anti-Semitism, which is really just the anti-genocide um, pro-humanity encampments that have been coming up from across the country. She is on the list of our dirty dozen, meaning among the worst in Congress. And I think it was just confirmed, right? Yes. Yeah. We went in there to try to talk to the staff about some of the things that she has been doing and how upset we are. And what they said is, out, We're you all people, please. get out of here. We don't want to hear from you. Usually the staffers like can differentiate themselves, but these staffers are like just as horrible as she is. It's it not worse. Yeah. Absolutely. Shocking. Shocking. Yeah. Just Disgusting, disrespectful. Mm -hmm. So we want to say some of the things we were going to say to the staff when we were in there, and we want to talk about why we are so upset with Virginia Fox and her just obsession with trying to shut down student activism, mm -hmm. her obsession with calling anything that is pro-Palestinian anti-Semitic, and the way she is making money from this crusade is being financially rewarded by all of these far-right billionaires in these private donor events. Back in January, after she first began her witch hunt against uh, university presidents, Mark Rowan, who is the co-founder of Apollo Global Management, he's worth $6 billion, um, he held a private fundraiser for Virginia Fox, where they started ranking in tens of thousands of dollars. Um, and Truthout has done an article about this, documenting how many different far-right billionaires are now giving um, Virginia Fox small private donations and hosting these big glamorous fundraisers that us American taxpayers are not able to see. It's not transparent to us. Um, and I also want to note that a lot of these billionaires, their board of trustee members at UPenn, um, at Columbia, they have been using their financial power in the university and in our Congress to push forth this anti-Semitism equals anti-Zionism argument. Um, and they also are the people that fund APAC, $250,000 Mr. Rowan gave this past year, and the Anti-Defamation League, ADL, which has been responsible for a lot of these messaging bills that we see coming out of Congress every other week. There was a New York Times piece about uh, Congresswoman Fox, and it said there are two um, bases of her policy making. One is her religious beliefs, and she says, uh, growing up in rural North Carolina, people here believe that Jews are God's chosen people, and I grew up in the Baptist church believing that. So this is her foundation for uh, policy making. And the other is her identification with the underdog. And here she is calling the Jewish students the underdog. But of course, the underdog in all of this is the Palestinian people. So we tell her that as an elected official, you can put your religious beliefs aside and you can really look at the facts. And the facts are 75 years of oppression of the Palestinian people support the real underdog.